This is Twit. Downfall is the name of yet another information disclosure vulnerability that was recently rediscovered in Intel's chips. And unlike Spectre and Meltdown, this one really has some teeth. Here's what its rediscoverer wrote, and I'll explain in a minute why I'm using that term. He wrote, downfall attacks target a critical weakness found in billions of modern processors used in personal and cloud computing. This vulnerability, identified as CVE-2022-40982, enables a user to access and steal data from other users who share the same computer. For instance, a malicious app obtained from an app store could use the downfall attack to steal sensitive information like passwords, encryption keys, and private data, such as banking details, personal emails, and messages. Similarly, in cloud computing environments, a malicious customer could exploit the downfall vulnerability to steal data and credentials from other customers who share the same cloud computer. The vulnerability is caused by memory optimization features in Intel processors that unintentionally reveal internal hardware registers to software. This allows untrusted software to access data stored by other programs, which should not normally be accessible. He wrote, I discovered that the gather instruction meant to speed up access scattered data in memory leaks the content of the internal vector register file during speculative execution. To exploit this vulnerability, I introduced gather data sampling, which he calls GDS, and gather value injection, GVI, techniques. Okay, so in the past, whereas we never had any demonstrations for the Spectre and Meltdown attacks because they remained theoretical, the Downfall site, downfall.page is the URL, .page, shows videos of 128 and 256 bit AES keys being stolen from another user sharing the same computer. Also, the theft of arbitrary data from the Linux kernel and more. All of Intel's core processor architectures from the 6th generation Skylake to and through the 11th generation Tiger Lake are affected. So this is nine years worth of Intel's processors since the 6th gen Skylake chips appeared back in 2014. And the attacks using this are practical. Its author wrote, GDS that's his gather uh, data sampling, GDS is practical. He said, it took me two weeks to develop an end-to-end -end attack stealing encryption keys from OpenSSL. It only requires the attacker and victim to share the same physical processor core, which frequently happens on modern-day computers, implementing preemptive multitasking and simultaneous multithreading. So, Intel has released a microcode update, which blocks transient results of gather instructions and prevents attacker code from observing speculative gather data or speculative data, data from gathered or, you know, gathered by gather. <laughs> That's the good news. The bad news is that depending upon how much benefit the processor may have been obtaining from its speculative execution optimization, the impact on performance Intel acknowledges might be as much as 50%. There's, you know, there's one of the, the, the one thing all of these vulnerabilities that we've talked about have in common. They are all about speculative execution. In other words, Intel Back in, oh, probably 2011, given that it takes about three years to get a chip from ori original concept out, and the Skylake occurred in 2014. So back around 2011, Intel engineers had this terrific idea that since the laws of physics 
we're making it impossible to just keep increasing the processor's clock. A different way to speed up code was to create a massive overabundance of processor power by having more execution resources all running at as fast as they could go since they couldn't go any faster. So if you can't make them go faster, just have more of them going as fast as you can and allow that excess apply that excess to the task of executing code speculatively. The idea is that the processor would be allowed to run ahead by prefetching from memory ahead of its the, the, the data instructions and looking at them ahead of its actual execution. And if that prefetching system encountered a branch instruction, it would follow both code paths from the branch the one that branched and the one that didn't branch by continuing to fetch and examine those instructions. Then at some point in the future, once the processor's actual execution had caught up to the branch instruction, then it would know which path to follow and it would on all the work down the other path would be discarded. The side channel edge case that Intel failed to pay sufficient attention to was that all of that extra work that ended up being discarded left some traces behind. Memory would, would have been fetched that didn't end up ever being needed or used, but the cache would have been filled with that and other contents that would have been in the cache would have been evicted to make room. Remnants were left behind in the branch prediction logic that's used to make decisions when insufficient information is available at the time, and on and on and on. This has been biting Intel, and to a somewhat lesser degree AMD, for years now. In the author's Q&A on the page, he posted the question, why is this called downfall? And the author replies, downfall defeats fundamental security boundaries in most computers and is a successor to previous data leaking vulnerabilities in CPUs, including meltdown and fallout. In this trilogy, downfall defeats all previous mitigations once again. At the start of this, I referred to this author as the rediscoverer of this. Wow. The reason is that Intel was informed of this very vulnerability twice before. Back in 20, uh, yeah, in 2018, four years after Skylake Sky Lake began this, they chose, for whatever reason at the time, to ignore the problem. Perhaps it was due to the damaging effect it might have on their public relations, or maybe because of the massive performance hit any patched microcode would force. Either way, its discovery, complete with ample proofs of concept, and Leo, you're playing one now in, into the video on the podcast, ample proofs of concept and source code on GitHub cannot oh, be swept dear. Oh. under the rug so my sense of specter and meltdown was it was so hard to implement that nobody had there hadn't been any exploits exactly but there has easier now we have one oh, that crap. is practical <laughs> and the source code is on github oh. now we got problems now we got problems and predictably a class action lawsuit has been filed by five aggrieved so-called victims and their ambulance chasing attorney. Uh, it's necessary to show actual concrete damage rather than to simply be put out by Intel's past behavior. So it's unlikely that this is anything more than a ploy, probably to get Intel to pay out some modest settlement to make this most recent lawsuit just go away. You know, Intel certainly has bigger problems because they have had to patch all the microcode on their processors because this is really bad. This really does break protection boundaries in the cloud. And I mean, it's, you know, this that, is the real deal finally. That's the main threat model here is shared yeah. processor, right? So servers are particularly vulnerable because 
most websites don't own the computer they or the processor they're sharing it right so, yeah so end user workstation is not a problem because you're yeah. unlikely i mean nobody's I sharing mean, my workstation there there it has been noted though that this uh, exploit could probably be used through a browser so you could mm. go to a website that loads malicious code and then while you're not paying attention it's busy using this exploit to try to you know get your <clears throat> the the secret keys that you've got stored in your computer uh so you know enterprise users need to be aware of this and cautious the good news is intel is on this finally and that and that you know uh, as we know updates from microsoft will br bring microcode patches with them uh you know, so th this will end up getting fixed. And I guess but, Intel did fix it in every processor after the 11th generation. So they yes. know how to fix it. Yes. Without yes. without killing performance? Uh, no, it's a performance hit. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, they're not happy. Turn off this speculative was a, execution. Yeah, this was a real win for them. And they're, by their own admission, they're saying a 50% drop in performance, Oof. depending upon how how much gather was speeding things up so basically they were you you could say that they were cheating to get this performance benefit and certainly they were cheating after 2018 when they were told right. that this could happen and they said ah, we don't think it's going to be a problem is you there know? no way to do speculative execution without this vulnerability i guess would be the question i mean uh in apple's it, processors use speculative execution his new Apple Silicon. Everything does. That's that's a major technique used by modern microprocessors. Yes, and in fact, they they have a fix for it, which obscures the data that that this gather yeah. instruction was being so used block to the get side channel. Don't turn so off. So exactly. Execution. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. yeah. interesting. So I think they were they were insufficiently cautious with the these edge cases, which do allow some information uh, information leakage and you know this is the the, the beauty the, the 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 good part of the way the security industry is working now we would not have any of this if it were not for the academic researchers who were just poking at this and exploring what can be done you know there's no money in in revealing this no one's getting paid it's just researchers no, this guy's who want to UCSD he's a he's a from he's a researcher yep. he's not yeah he's not a hacker yep. nope why did he feel necessary to to put out exploit code i wonder um probably out of a, a, a just an upset over the fact that intel had been Refuses so negligent it. yeah yeah, yeah. Well, we've been kind of waiting for this other shoe to drop. In fact, I was, I was, I had kind of thought, oh, it's not going to happen. We're okay. I know, and it it took quite a while. Yeah. And you know, Bruce Schneier's famous uh, reminder keeps coming back. You know, attacks never get worse; they only always get better. Yeah. And you know, here we have you know something that's been sitting around for nine years <laughs> in these chips. Oh my God! That actually does allow cross cross process information theft. Mm -hmm. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV. Now called ACI Learning. Together, ACI Learning and IT Pro entertain and train your team to keep your business performing at its best. Visit go.acilearning.com/twit. Twit listeners who complete the form can receive as much as 65% off an IT Pro Enterprise Solution Plan. You'll get the proper quote based on the size of your team.